Hey guys, so today I'm working on a 2001 Pontiac Montana and we're going to switch out this single din for a double din. I got one lying around so we're going to spruce this thing up. So the nice thing about having an aftermarket radio in this vehicle is we get to reuse some of the parts. So we're going to be able to reuse the antenna adapter and the wiring harness which is also a module which tells the deck to turn on and maintain our wrap shutdown or, or retain accessory power and also have our chimes as well. The only thing we we're not going to be able to use is the mounting kit. So to do this job, we're going to need the wiring harness, so we're going to reuse the old one. The antenna adapter is still in the van, so we're just going to leave it there. And we're going to need a new mounting kit as well, because this one cannot accommodate the double din. It's only meant for a single din. It's got a pocket here, so this one's got the proper opening big enough to accommodate the screen. The tools you're going to need, you need a knife, mainly you're going to need wire strippers, a set of cutters, shrink tube, solder, and a good quality soldering iron. So since we're dealing with used parts, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the old harness. Now, I did this deck install about five years ago. So, well, I see things have changed a lot. I've definitely streamlined my installs up till now. So, I tape this all up. You can still do that, whatever. Um, this is the biggest culprit right here. It's a big bottleneck right here, which just doesn't look that pretty. Um, I use butt connectors here. There's nothing wrong with butt connectors. I did, I do have a video of a deck install, install how to use butt connectors. It's just, it's easy for a lot of people. Um, but now I like to use solder and shrink wrap and that's how I'm gonna do this install today. But there's nothing wrong with them. It just doesn't look as nice. So we're gonna free this all up. I know I used a lot of tape, but that's okay. This is definitely overkill. So we got our tie straps here. Get those off now. You want to clean this up nicely because I can still reuse this deck after. I know it doesn't have USB or anything like that or anything special, but someone that doesn't have a CD player is going to be a godsend. And it's actually a nice sounding deck. I do really like Pioneer products for their sound quality. So since we're not going to be using this side, let's just cut it off here and make this quick. So we're not going to use that. So you want to make sure you cut everything equally so it's as nice and even tight as possible. Clean up your mess as you go along. So go ahead and bear off all the ends. Okay, so we're done bearing off all the wires. The next thing you want to do is after you've bared them off, I like to twist the wires together to make them more manageable and a little more stiff. This way when you're working with the wires and you're putting the shrink tube on, you'll see it's a lot easier to work with. Sometimes on the shrink tube I like to start on the harness side, but today I'm going to do it on the deck harness side. go one at a time. Keep track of them. If you're new to this, you'll, it'll be a little bit hard to keep track of all the wires, so I like to keep all the undone ones in this side of my hand and then move them over with my thumb just so it's easier for me to keep track of what I've put the shrink tube on, which ones I haven't. And try to keep it upright, don't turn it upside down or else you know they might fall off. And then you go to solder everything and you realize you don't have it on there.
Okay. Next, you want to get your soldering iron all nice and hot and ready. And we are going to now start putting the harnesses together. So we're going to start with, I like to start with the primary wires that make the actual deck turn on, followed by function wires, and then followed by audio. So we're going to start with power, or constant power. Twist as tightly as you can. And that way you don't have any burrs sticking out and you make a nice solder connection. Because the last thing you want to do is you want to make the solder, because when you actually solder this, this part's going to get really stiff. Even one wire sticking out, you put the shrink tube over it, you heat it up, and then that burr sticking out, and then it's a, it's a possibility for a short. So put the iron underneath, start soldering it. I don't have my cleaner today, but you should be cleaning the tip as you go along. I'll get it's a not the towel best way, but something's better than nothing. Next, we're going to do accessory or switch power. Now I do have a soldering video to show you how to solder, but what you want to make sure is you get enough heat on there and you actually see that solder sink in so you can actually see the individual strands. If it looks all cloudy and it's a big bubble, you probably have a cold solder joint. That's not good enough. Next we're going to do our illumination wire. Now we have two wires to pick from. One's like a dimmer wire, one's illumination. So typically what you want to do is you want to pick, best practice is to pick the one that matches. Sometimes you have to switch it up if it doesn't function properly, but Rule of thumb is if you pick the one that matches, you're usually, that's a safe bet. So that's what we're going to do. So this one's got orange and white, this one's orange and white, we're going to pick those two. And your remote wire. Now the remote wire, this just has a 12 volt output when the deck's on. On this side of the harness, it could be for an amplifier, it could be for a power antenna. Volkswagens, don't hook them up. Read the instructions carefully before you work on any vehicle. In this case, we're just doing it for the sake of practice. Don't have to hook it up. This van does not have bows or anything like that. This wire doesn't do anything, but we're just gonna hook it up anyways. Because it makes me feel better. Those are our primary function wires for now. Okay, usually you see me guys use my awesome butane torch. I forgot to bring it back here, so I'm going to use a barbecue lighter, something that you probably have at home somewhere. So this isn't as cool and it takes a little bit longer, but we need to get the job done. So, having the shrink tube across your connections, and now it's ready to be insulated, take your heat source, and heat up and just enough till it grabs over the wire nice and snug. I like to do this in stages just to keep it a little more organized, so do your function wires first, then do your all your wires afterwards. And then once it's cooled down, lightly inspect with your finger, make sure that there's no burr sticking out. If you prick yourself, you'll have to go over it with tape. But we're good. So for connections that you're not going to use, like this instance, uh, we are not going to use the reverse input. And the pink wire, I'm going to try not using the, uh, the vehicle speed sense. I've done installs with and without it. Uh, on some applications, it is more accurate for sure to use the vehicle speed sense, and I've done a lot where it's worked fine. 
if you think about it, all those portable GPSs in your cell phone, they don't hook up to your vehicle speed sense. So we're not going to do in this situation. So when you're turning an end, if it fits in the shrink tube, I like to fold it back, put your shrink tube over it, and then you apply your heat. And then when the tip's still in, warm, I know you guys are going to make a lot of jokes about that, close it off. Okay, so now you have an idea how to twist the wires and everything. So you don't need to watch me twist the wires every single time. I've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of twisting them all. So we're going to go ahead and quickly solder all the wires together. Take your time and make sure you get a decent amount of heat on there. That way you're not getting any cold solder joints. Preferably have the iron underneath the two wires that you're soldering. That way gravity can pull the solder through the wires. Okay, so before I tie up my harness and make it all neat and tidy, I'm going to go over the last portion of the navigation install is the e-brake wire. You are supposed to hook this up to the e-brake unless you are, unless this is an off-road only application or in a boat. It's a good thing that the Montana is strictly only an off-road vehicle which is also amphibious. So I can put this in. That's a TR7. So. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, why am I doing it with a TR7? Because we've all watched the videos on the F900s or a lot of the Pioneer navigation units. On um, You just move the wire over and then it just works. It does on the newer ones. On the F series though, they have this weird glitch and it happens after about six months. All you guys that have the F series 900s or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. After six months, you'll get in your vehicle, you'll turn it on and then it just reboots. You'll get your splash screen and it'll just reboot. And that's it. You can go into test mode and then you can get it working, but then you're just pissed off with the thing. So after going on Google a bunch of times, I realized a lot of people are saying that it's because of the bypass. After a certain amount of months, it just locks up. And it's actually pretty consistent if you look hard enough on the forums. So what I decided to do is I decided to use a TR7 to give me the signals I need but the TR7 will reset it every single time and this should fix the problem. I haven't tested it. Message me in six months and ask me how it's doing. So, to finalize, uh, you'll also notice that I left these two wires bare. It's because we have a steering wheel control module back in the van, so I gotta hook that back up. And I didn't want to take it out of the van because it's wired up to the other side of the harness. So we'll just go back in the van, solder that on, tape it all up. So take your wire ties. I only use four on average. You don't really need any more than four. Two on one end, two on the other. And now that everything's all tied up nicely, you see you have a nice, clean, reliable harness. Okay, the next step is we got to put on the mounting kit in order to secure the deck. These are typically a multi-vehicle application, so you have to read the instructions and break off the appropriate tabs and only leave the ones that you're going to use. So we've gone ahead and broken off the tabs, put on our mounting screws, so this deck is ready to go into the vehicle. All right, so we're finalizing the installation. So. What I've gone ahead and done is I've put the mic up in the headliner up here. It runs all the way across, down, underneath the dash, and comes back up into here. We have the harness and everything plugged in. Inside here we have steering wheel control module, TR7, because it's an off-road amphibious vehicle, and our module that maintains our wrap shutdown and everything. Now the nice thing about this van is it's actually padded down here. It's a nice little spot to actually tuck all these away. So they're easy to access if you ever have to service it later. 
What I've also done is pre-wired and ran a fish through to fish my USB into the glove box. We're not doing anything too fancy in this one, keeping it all basic. And another tip I have is the GPS antenna. I've seen a lot of people put this on the dash over here. It just looks ugly. There are so many GPS satellites now in <laughs> orbiting around the Earth. You can put these things inside the dash. There's actually enough clearance for me to get the deck in with this sitting on top, so I'm just gonna place it right there. As long as there's no metal between the antenna's view and the sky, you're fine. You can put metal, fiberglass, whatever, it will transmit through. So you can put these antennas under the dash. It saves you a lot of time and it makes the install look a lot cleaner, a lot more stock looking. Okay guys, so we got the van all buttoned back up. So let's do a recap on what we installed. So up here we have the Bluetooth mic. In the glove box. We have our USB for easy access and it's nicely concealed. And we'll just turn on the unit. We have our door chimes maintained because we use the proper module. And the nice thing about these Pioneers, you can change the splash screen to whatever you want. Like literally, you can change it to whatever you want. So I like to just put in the vehicle's logo. Makes it look a lot more factory. Downside about these F-Series are, they take a little while to load. So bear with me on this one. Okay. So we're getting it to start up right now. And like I said, we had steering wheel control modules already installed. We were able to maintain that and just plug it right in because the previous deck was a Pioneer. Didn't have to go back and reprogram it or anything like that. So you can see here, we got volume. I can change, uh, we'll go so you can see the radio station. So change the channel. See the attention show up and pushing mute. Um, every vehicle is different, so depending on what steering wheel controls you have and the ability to program them into the actual steering wheel control unit plus the deck itself, it all varies. But that is, in a nutshell, a double-din navigation install.